Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now we will discuss uh, some clinical abnormalities of pain sensation. Some clinical abnormalities of pain sensation. The first abnormality is hyperalgesia. Hyperalgesia. Hyperalgesia means increased sensitivity to pain. Increased sensitivity to pain is called hyperalgesia. Hyperalgesia is of two types, primary and secondary. Primary and secondary. What is primary hyperalgesia? Increased sensitivity of the pain receptors. Increased sensitivity of the pain receptors is primary type of the hyperalgesia. Pain receptors become more sensitive. And this is uh, seen in sunburnt skin. You're exposed to uh, sunlight for a long period. So it results into sunburnt skin. And the other cause may be skin on the inflamed area. Skin on the inflamed area. And there is uh, inflammation, sojourn. Skin on that part becomes very sensitive to pain. So, skin over the inflamed area. Right? This is the primary hyperalgesia seen in sunburned skin and skin on the inflamed part of the body, there will be primary hyperalgesia. What is secondary hyperalgesia? Secondary hyperalgesia is there is facilitation of pain impulses transmission. So transmission of pain impulses is facilitated. Transmission of pain impulses is facilitated in secondary hyperalgesia. It is seen in region of the spinal cord and thalamus. So in region of the spinal cord and thalamus, there is secondary hyperalgesia. There is facilitation of the pain impulses. Next pain abnormality is Herpes zoster. Herpes zoster. Herpes zoster is due to infection of the dorsal root ganglion by a herpes virus. So infection of the dorsal root ganglion by a herpes virus. We know about the dorsal root ganglion. Ganglion in the dorsal root of spinal nerve. And this dorsal root ganglion contains cell bodies of the sensory neurons. It contains cell bodies of the sensory neurons. So when dorsal root ganglion is affected, is infected, it results into the herpes zoster. Herpes zoster is also called uh, shingles. It is also called shingles. Now in herpes zoster, there is a severe pain in the dermatome associated with the infected dorsal root ganglion. 
So severe pain in the dermatome associated with the infected dorsal root ganglion. You know dermatome? It is a band like area on the skin, half away around the body. So in the dermatome, which is associated with the infected dorsal root ganglion, there is severe pain. Why does pain occur? Because of excitation of the neurons in the dorsal root ganglion by the virus. So excitation of neurons in the dorsal root ganglion by the herpes virus, it results into pain in the dermatome associated with the infected dorsal root ganglion. Along with pain, there is also rash, 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 or there is redness in the part of the skin that is dermatome. Then there are eruptions, eruptions, vesicles are formed, so vesicles are formed in the skin of the dermatome which is associated with infected dorsal root ganglion. So vesicles are formed, you, know, you see, vesicles are formed in the dermatome. Here you see vesicles are formed. So first there is rash, then eruptions are vesicles are formed. So why are vesicles formed? Actually, the virus is transported in the exoplasm to the nerve endings. The virus is transported by exoplasmic transport to the nerve endings. And in nerve endings skin, there is rash, eruption, or vesicles are formed. After some days, the vesicles subside. After some days, the vesicles subside. There are eruptions. There are there are eruptions, vesicles are subside, and then there is crust formation. So crust formation after some days. Crust formation after some days. Right? So keep in mind uh, the vesicles subside, disappear. But pain may persist in the dermatome associated with the infected dorsal root ganglion for many days. So for many days, pain persists. Pain persists. So this was about the herpes zoster or shingles. Uh, next clinical abnormality of the pain is trigeminal or glossopharyngeal neuralgia. Loss of range or trigeminal neuralgia. It is also called the tick dogorex. Tick tick dogorex or trigeminal or loss of range. Neuralgia, also called till tick tick dolorex. Tick dolorex. So there is a severe electric shock like pain. Severe electric shock like pain in the area of sensory innervation of the fifth or ninth nerve. So severe electric shock like pain in the half of the face, that is the area of the sensory innervation of the trigeminal nerve 
or the loss of energy. So severe electric shock like pain in one half of the face uh, in the sensory, in the area of sensory innovation of the triangular of loss of radium now. Now the pain persists for seconds or even more. Pain persists for seconds or even more. What is the stimulus for the pain? So the pain is precipitated. The pain is precipitated by mechanoreceptive stimulation by mechanoreceptive stimulation on the skin or in the mouth and throat. So the pain is precipitated by the mechanoreceptive stimulation of the skin or in the mouth and throat. See, the skin of the face is touched. So touching of the skin of the face. Talking, chewing, solving. So talking, chewing or solving, it precipitates the pain of the trigeminal or loss of radial neurons. Uh, medicines are used to control the pain, but in some cases there is no relief, no benefit of the medicine. So sometimes uh, the sensory root of the fifth nerve has to cut. To relieve the pain, the sensory root of the fifth nerve has to cut. And when the sensory root of fifth nerve is cut, then there will be analgesia, loss of sensations on the sensory innovation of the fifth nerve. Area of sensory, fifth nerve innovation, there will be analgesia, loss of sensation. So this was about the tick dorex or trigeminal or glossopharyngeal neurangia. Our next uh, uh, clinical abnormality of the pain which is uh, very common is headache. Headache. A headache is pain referred to the top of head. Pain referred to the top of head from deep structures. So headache is pain referred to the top of the head from deep structures. So pain referred to the top of the head from deep structures. This is the headache. So there are two types of causes of headache. So two types of causes of headache. Intracranial and extracranial causes. Intracranial and extracranial causes. So first about the intracranial causes of headache. Inside this skull. I mean intracranial causes of the head. We know uh, in the brain pain receptors are not present. Pain receptors are present in the meninges. In the meninges. So when meninges are stretched and meninges are stretched there is trauma to the trauma, injury to the meninges. There is infection of meninges, say meningitis. Meningitis. So in meningitis, trauma or stretching of the meninges, it results into headache. It results into headache. 
The other cause of headache, I mean the intraclinic cause of headache is migraine. Is important uh, cause of headache migraine. Uh, migraine is uh, common in females who are tense, sensitive type of personalities. Right? And this is uh, uh, thought to be headache involving the blood vessels, the arteries in the brain. Headache due to involvement of the arteries in the brain. So more common in females who are sensitive and tense type of emotional type of personalities. Now before the uh, attack or episode of headache, there are prodromal symptoms. There are prodromal symptoms. So before the attack or episode of headache, there are prodromal symptoms. So what happens? The patient has long uh, tension, prolonged tension, emotional upset. And when there is the prolonged tension or emotional upset, there is vasospasm. There is vasospasm. I mean the arteries in the brain get spasm. When there is vasospasm, there is ischemia of the brain, ischemia of the brain. And this ischemia of the brain, it results into the prodromal symptoms. It results into prodromal symptoms. So before the attack, these symptoms, these remain for say half an hour to one hour, half an hour to one hour. And these symptoms are due to ischemia of the brain. So there is nausea, disturbance of the vision or disturbance in the visual field. There may be hallucinations, so nausea, visual disturbances or disturbance in visual field. And there are hallucinations. So what are the hallucinations? You perceive something which is not there perceive something which is not actually there. So there may be visual hallucinations, tactile hallucinations. You see something which is not there. You feel something on the body which is not there. It may be olfactory hallucination. It may be auditory hallucination. You smell something which is not there. You hear something which is not there. So in the prodromal symptoms, before the episode or attack of migraine, there are visual, tactile, olfactory, auditory hallucinations. And these symptoms are due to ischemia. And ischemia is due to vasospasm. Now after some time, say half an hour, one hour, the vasospasm is relieved. Vasospasm is relieved. So blood flow to the brain arteries increases rapidly. And this results into severe throbbing pain. It results into severe throbbing pain when there is relief of the vasospasm and the arteries are dilated in the brain, there is rapid blood flow 
to these uh, arteries resulting into severe throbbing pain in the head. Severe headache, throbbing headache, right? This is the migraine. I told you migraine is the more common in females. It's more common in females. The moreover, there is also genetic predisposition. There is also genetic predisposition. It runs in families. If parents uh, suffer from migraine, their children can also suffer from migraine. This was about the important cause of intracranial cause of headache that is migraine involving the uh, vasospasm of the brain arteries. Our next intracranial cause of migraine is low CSF pressure. Low CSF pressure. You know the lumbar puncture? Sometimes we perform lumbar puncture to take out sample of the CSF. Let me perform lumbar puncture, especially in sitting position. And you will say we draw only 20 ml of CSF. You withdraw only 20 ml of CSF. They will be, due to low CSF pressure, they will be severe headache. So after lumbar puncture, you remove say about 20 ml of CSF and this results into low CSF pressure. It results into low CSF pressure and this leads to severe headache in these patients having the lumbar puncture and the removal of CSF. Uh, next intracranial cause of uh, headache is Intake of alcohol. Intake of alcohol. So many people who take alcohol, they develop headache. After intake of alcohol, there is headache. Alcohol is toxic to many tissues. It is toxic to meninges. It's toxic to meninges. It causes irritation of meninges. And this results into this results into headache. The other intracranial cause of headache is severe constipation. Sometimes in severe constipation there is headache. Now in severe constipation toxic substances from the intestines are absorbed into the blood and these toxic substances irritate meninges. These irritate meninges and this results into headache in individuals having severe constipation. So this was about the intracranial causes of the headache including the meningitis, stretching or trauma of the meninges, low CSF pressure, intake of alcohol, and then severe uh, constipation. Now we come to the extracranial causes of headache. Extracranial causes. So these include the spasm of the muscle, muscle spasm. So spasm of the muscles of the scalp, spasm of the muscles of the neck, so spasm of neck muscles or other muscles around the skull, scalp, it results into headache. Then eye diseases, eye diseases, it results into headache. Say, Infection of the eye, conjunctivitis, conjunctivitis and other eye infections, it results into headache. 
glaucoma, increased intraocular pressure. So increased intraocular pressure, it results into headache. Then headache also occurs in individuals having hyperopia, hypermetropia. So in having, subject having hyperopia, a hypermetropia, there is headache. Now in uh, uh, hyperopia, hypermetropia, the distant vision is better, while the near vision is uh, defective or uh, diminished. Now actually, uh, in these hypermetropic individuals, ciliary muscles contract persistently to focus distant objects. To focus distant objects. So continuous contraction of the ciliary muscles to focus distant objects, it results into headache. So headache in hypermetropic individuals. This was about the eye dis diseases, disorders as cause of headache. Then cause may be infection, inflammation, irritation in the nasal cavities and paranasal sinuses. Nasal cavities of paranasal sinuses. So chronic sinusitis, acute sinusitis, it results into head. Then other ear infection, infection in the ear, otitis media, other infection in the ear, these also result into head. So this was about the extra cranial causes of head. And with this, uh, uh, we have discussed uh, the clinical, common clinical abnormalities of the pain sensation.